<laughs> so uh, Francis uh, Gurry, we're hoping on you to bring back something a little positive in that. I mean, I don't want to, you know, fly away, scare it out of my mind. Um, can we make, I mean, we definitely understand there, there are a lot of risks. There's a question of trust. Is it possible to, we definitely need to find new forms of governance. The idea of putting networked intelligence together is kind of, I mean, it, it gives me a little hope. Uh, what, what do you make of it, Mr. Gurry? Well, thank you very much, Vir uh, Virginie, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. Uh, thank you also to Thierry de Montréal for uh, this invitation. Uh, look, I'm not going to be such an optimist, um, I'm oh, afraid, well. <laughs> um, but n nor a pessimist uh, necessarily, uh, but I'll focus more on the problem than the solution, uh, because I think we can't design the solution until, until such time as we have a thorough understanding of the problem, and we're getting there, I think, but I'm not sure we're completely there. Now, I would say as far as the in impact of the connected world on global governance uh, is concerned, well, the greater the connection, um, the greater the dependence that is created. Uh, and the greater the dependence, the greater the vulnerability and risk. Uh, and so I think we've seen that, and it's been described on the panel this morning by many persons. We see it, the risk to privacy, which is playing out in the policy discussions and the governance discussions on uh, the protection of personal data. The risk to business assets, it's playing out in terms of how we deal with uh, espionage, so cyber espionage. Uh, the risk to um, the integrity of data, which is playing out in the folk, uh, fake news uh, area. The risk to uh, security, which is playing out in the cyber warfare area. So uh, I think that uh, something we can say about these risks is that they are qualitatively different from the risks of the past. And they're qualitatively different uh, for several reasons. First of all, because they are international in character. And that's just an obvious thing, of course. Uh, but it's not the case with risk uh, frameworks of the past, necessarily. Uh, so uh, the second is that they are occurring at an accelerated speed. And that has been mentioned again by others. And the third is, I think, that they're very radical, and that's, I think, an, a, a, a product of the accumulation of, of knowledge. I mean, Sherlock Holmes says in one of his books, you know, knowledge begets knowledge as money bears interest. And that's what's happening, of course, with the degree of uh, knowledge in the world. Now, our institutions, I think, were designed for a completely different risk framework than from these risk frameworks. Um, and uh, if you think in terms, since uh, we've been speaking about cities, if you think in terms of the walls of a city, a walled city uh, is one governance response to the sort of risks that were out there. Now we have a completely qualitatively different sort of risks that we are confronting. And that is causing uh, I think radical disruption in the efficiency and the efficacy of our governance institutions uh, uh, because they were designed for something else, frankly. And we can see that in many different ways. I'll give you one example, uh, which comes out of the nature, what, I, I mentioned three things where I think, which differentiate risks these days in the connected world. One of them is speed. Um, and coming out of that, of course, we find ourselves confronted with a series of situations <coughs> which our institutions have not had the time to reflect upon and consider. So uh, for as long as we live in a world in which you can do anything except that which is expressly prohibited, as opposed to a world in which you can only do which, that which is permitted, and I'm not advocating a change, but for as long as we live in that sort of a context, then science and technology, particularly with the speed and with the accumulation, are going to be way out in front of our institutions and the design that were designed for dealing with different nature, uh, uh, different risks, different risk frameworks. Uh, and there are many, many examples, but I think the effect of it is that uh, governance is reverting increasingly to the market and technology, or if you like, in order, it's reverting increasingly to technology, 
which is actually determining social directions or the direction of society, uh, and business models are built by the market upon that basis. Nothing to do with governments. Uh, and you can see this in anything from relatively trivial examples to major, major examples. Let's just, I can give you one from my field uh, very, very briefly, which is music. So in the last 20 years, there has been a revolution, of course, in the production, the distribution, and the consumption of music. Everything has changed. Uh, now, we have reached a situation in which in the last two years, for the first time in 20 years, the size of the music industry worldwide has, has grown uh, as opposed to reduced. And digital sizes, digital market sales rather, are increasing. That situation was produced by the market, not by governments. And I'm you know, saying that as someone whose job is to supposed to get international cooperation around solutions for this sort of a situation. It's been produced by different and accessible, more accessible business models. Uh, so we have a situation in which a lot of governance and uh, a lot of social direction is being set by the market and technology, regardless of ideologies, just as a consequence of the speed and the radical nature of technologies. Uh, and uh, when you come to the international solution to that, since one of the features of the new risk framework is that these risks are international, of course it's much worse than the, at the national level. It's much slower than at the national level, uh, but we have, of course, international problems or risks, uh, if, you, uh, if you like. Um, and in addition, at the international level, I think, uh, one of the things, and this comes back to a bit with one of the things that points that Toby was making, where I'm not sure I'm in total agreement with him, uh, what uh, we see at the international level is that these areas of risk are also the areas of competition. So let me give you the example of Ebola uh, and the World Health Organization. Now, it's relatively easy in the World Health Organization, relatively easy, to get a unity of purpose about the suppression of Ebola because everyone's interests are the same. We all want to suppress it for different reasons. That's not the case in science and technology because it's the center of competition between countries. Uh, and this is a, uh, you know, a newer feature because it wasn't always so much the centre, although I'd argue it's often been near the centre. So that's one thing. And secondly, it's also the centre of difference. It's the centre of disparities. The great disparities in the world are produced by uh, technological differences in technological capacity. So we face a situation which is a perfect storm in many respects. New risks different nature, they're, they're stressing and disrupting our governance institutions that we've known because they were designed for walled cities or to just take an extreme example, different situations. Um, and difficult to move forward because this is also the area where uh, we have huge differences and the area of competition. So um, I would say if I may just make one or two small uh, points, uh, other points. Um, these two factors, that is, that science and technology and, and are really the basis of competition and they're also the basis of the hugest, the biggest disparities, uh, this is producing a, a situation in which I think uh, it's a contribution to the movements that we see towards uh, unilateralism as a policy um, a posture rather than multilateralism. Uh, because if you're going to be competing, you go to your national basis to compete. So they're mm -hmm. contributing also to these movements we're seeing towards uh, uh, nationalism, uh, national approaches, uh, unilateral approaches as opposed to multilateral approaches. But on the other hand, it's also the case that because of interconnection, that the first mover, provided it has scale, uh, is going to be determining the global rule. And I think that we see from, uh, I think it was Patrick who mentioned the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. So the European Union has moved first. 
And the scale of the European Union is such that the, the whole world has to comply with it. Now, it might be different if some a small country, an island state, uh, introduces the regulation, but when it's the European Union. And furthermore, uh, there is a growing pressure, which we've seen over the last couple of days, um, with Tim Cook, for example, from Apple, speaking out and saying, well, the uh, United States needs to uh, develop a regulatory framework also for the protection of personal data, plus the social movements on, on the internet all produce a situation in which, uh, you know, influence is being exercised in a different way and it's being exercised by the first mover. And I'm not saying that the EU deliberately chose to do that, but that's the impact uh, these days of an absence of multilateral, a reversion for lots of reasons to uh, unilateral approaches, uh, but we will also see that first moves are made by China and first moves, of course, are made by the United States of America despite its non-regulatory uh, culture. Um, so this produces a situation which I don't think is very optimistic for risk management in where we have a completely new set of risks uh, to deal with. Uh, so uh, in conclusion, I would say we really have to rethink our governance uh, models uh, re really radically rethink our go governance models to deal with new forms of risk. Thank you very much, Francis. Uh, I'd like to try something here. First, I'm going to try to summarize quickly what I think is the three solutions of governance you're proposing, and I'd like you to vote on it so, and see what, you know, what is the one that appeals best to you. So if I go to you, Francis, you're really the liberal one. Uh, that's the guys doing you know, the new technology. They they're going to find the way, the scale to put out the, the good answers, uh, just, I'm not sure why, but because uh, at least they'll have the power to implement at some point. You say uh, it's the risk are super important, we need a, some kind of a new government body. You're much more confident, you, Monsieur Nicolet, much more confident in multilater multilateral, it's a hard word for me to say, multilateralism than, than Francis Gurry is. And you, I think, have a very different approach because it's none of those two. It's let's take the intelligence where it is on the network. Let's try something really different. It's, it's provide governance within the network with the intelligence we have here. So we have something very spread out uh, with taking the best of what we can provide eventually. That's, let's say it's A, it's you, Toby. B, Mr. Nicolet, which is uh, let's try to put some sense, organize it the way we know how to do it. And basically it's a super body, you know, with new laws and try to, 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 to um, stop the risks. And you, it's, and uh, C would be you, Francis. Well, I described more than endorsed. I'd okay, say, say. okay, anyway, so it's not yeah. yours, but yeah. he, the description of Mr. Gurry's, which would be uh, coming out from, from the That's actors. What's happening. So let's say, uh, what do you think is the most likely to happen, if you don't mind helping me out here, but uh, do you think Toby is, is, is on the right path? Do you think Mr. Nicolet, and I'll, let's start with Toby, do, do people believe that there's intelligence in the network and we, we, can use, we can use it for governance? Does anybody think that here? There's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so let's say, let's say 10 <laughs> to be generous. Uh, now let's go to Mr. Nicolet, so rather more classical solution, um, probably better organized, easier for us to, to apprehend, uh, a, a new super governing But So I see one here, okay, we're a little more comfortable with your solution. 20. Voila, you even have somebody here. I apply here. the same rule, it's 20. Okay, yeah, apparently it's, it's the good one. Uh, and last, uh, alors what Francis des described, uh, who, who, is, who agrees with his description of, of the world? And how, and the, 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 the analogy with music was interesting, how, how this uh, whole business changed and evolved and, and set its new rules.